Hello everyone, I am Rajeshi Sengupta and we are in the week 11 of our course that is Indian Art, Material, Techniques and Artistic Practices. So this week we will be talking about multimedia approaches and that is uh, um, divided into this two week uh, you know span. So this week we will be talking about the first half of multimedia approaches. So what do I mean by multimedia approaches? So I am not talking about uh, the way it is called as like I mean multimedia the way we understand in terms of the, the digital uh, uh, you know uh, the technique or, or if I am thinking in terms of like the mixed media that is in which like there are different kind of media which are uh, brought together for producing one work. But here by multimedia approaches what I try to indicate is that there are many different kind of mediatic expressions and then there are different kind of approaches which are associated with certain media and those things were either exchanged with each other or how different kind of information flow from one to another and then that is how we see that different kind of practices have shaped and 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 sustained in the in the uh, in the second half of 20th century in india so that is what i call as the multimedia approaches now if we start with that i mean where where did it start so it is not really that we can put a point to it that or we can we can suggest that this is this particular year or this is this particular decade when it started for example, if we think about that some of the practices that had uh, sort of emerged in the post independence India, we do not really see them being exclusive. They had their roots in the history, however, the way they had uh, emerged in particular this, this time keeping the socio-cultural and political context in mind, then we see that I mean there were certain issues or certain aspects of those practices which were different and then this tendency towards uh, understanding the limitations and possibility of each medium and sort of bringing different mediatic expressions together, this is something that we find more and more after the Indian independence. Now in the last week we have spoken about uh, the various kinds of practices which, uh, f uh, which added to the nationalistic, nationalistic uh, expressions as well as uh, the nationalistic uh, um, you know the movement, the nationalist movement in India. But if we see that how those, those practices also had learned from history or they had their uh, exchange with history, then we have a sense of that, I mean they were also not being developed as, as exclusive practices. But then what happens in, in this, uh, this uh, very uh, crucial time in the 1940s that there was the transference of power and if you remember that we have looked into this map of India the Indian subcontinent at the beginning of last week's lecture and then we spoke that how the entire Indian subcontinent used to be there and then in 1947 the, uh, the Indian subcontinent was divided and the nation state India that we know today it was born. So then we see that the entire Indian subcontinent was divided into India and Pakistan. Uh, of course, it was known as the East Pakistan and West Pakistan and East Pakistan was later on uh, made into this independent country that is Bangladesh in 1971. So we see that from 1947 until the end of 20th century there were many different kind of political uh, uh, changes at the same time social changes and everything all those things taken, have taken place and those things have also made a huge deal of impact on how we look into material culture, visual culture, of course art making. Now something else we will also see that I mean how uh, there were a few institutions that came into being during this time. So if 1947 was the time when we know that India gained its independence, then in 1949 we see that 
uh, this this um, this dedicated um, art school in uh, in the in the uh, Maharaja Sahajirao University of Baroda that that came into being. So we have discussed this Maharaja Sahajirao of Baroda, um, the second portrait which was painted by Ravi Verma, Raja Ravi Verma in one of our earlier lectures. So, um, we, we are talking about this princely state of Baroda again and then there we see the establishment of this art school in 1949 that was also a crucial moment in the development of the arts in, in India. So, from the inception we find that there, there have been uh, uh, many uh, great teachers and, and uh, among, uh, under their supervision we find that many students they have also uh, came to be some of the most um, uh, well known artists in contemporary India. So, this if this is one institution that we find that uh, that have uh, contributed immensely to the development of um, um, art practice, the institutional art practice in, in India. During this time we also find that in 1952 the All India um, the Handicrafts Board AIHB was also established and uh, by this time we also find that there were um, uh, there were discussions about what is tradition, what is modernity, what kind of technologies would we need for nation building. So, all these different kind of debates are happening. We find that there were this new group of people who came, who proclaimed to be, um, you know, this, this artist in this newly independent country and what, what are their responsibilities how do they uh, situate themselves in, in, in this, in that um, political and economic, um, you know, situation in independent India. So, looking at that we find that during this time this one particular artist group came uh, uh, into being that is called the Progressive Artist Group in Bombay in 1947. So, in 1947 when we see that uh, this is this is also something that uh, this, this kind of practices we have seen in Western Europe uh, for example, in the early uh, 20th century the Fauvist group and then of course, that there have been many other groups in the uh, history of avant-garde. Uh, uh, art in, in Western Europe, in Paris and many other metropolitan cities. So, but that kind of activity or that kind of artist group was not something that is common in the um, India under the British rule. So, in 1947 we find that during this time um, this, this group of artists, the artist we have on screen that is uh, F. N. Souza, A. A. K. H. R. A. H. A. Gade, M. F. Hussain, S. K. Bakre and S. H. Raza. So, all of these artists we find and then later on Krishan Khanna also joined the group. So, all these people that they came to be in this one artist group and uh, that was something that was revolutionary for their time. And what they did also they proclaimed that they oppose this, this uh, romantic approach of um, the the, uh, the painters, for example, as um, Abhinindranath Tagore and and uh, his disciples, who had this romantic approach towards history. But I mean, of course, now when we see that, we do not really consider it as a um, uh, strictly romantic approach. We know that I mean that was also something that that contributed immensely to the understanding of the nation also to make people aware of their situation, their, their, their position in, in history and, and how they can um, understand the rich cultural heritage of the Indian subcontinent. But we see that here when, when this progressive artist group they, they came into being, they wanted to carve a different path for themselves, they wanted to proclaim that their position is different from many other artists that they, you know, who, who were there before them in the Indian subcontinent. And that is the reason we find that in this metropolitan center of Bombay, they came together 
they they constituted this artist group and then they held exhibition of their works so all of them would put together their works in gallery spaces and that is uh, and and they had organized this kind of uh, displays for the public so uh, we also see that uh, around in 1948 there was this one prominent exhibition and where many of the indian uh, historical objects were displayed and some of the group members of the progressive artist group including uh, m f hussain had visited this exhibition and uh, uh, and as as hussain said that i mean that was uh, an opportunity for him to see this uh, many of these historical artifacts from india's history which were uh, not um you know accessible to him beforehand so this this kind of different kind of uh, influences we would find that uh, in one hand they were looking in to the to the uh, european modernist painters and an artist where we find that this um this idea of art for art sake was already been nurtured and already it was in high debate and discussion so those things were also taken up by these painters here and they understood their position very well because uh, during that time uh, painting would not have been easy because that is a time when the nation building is the utmost priority and and perhaps people who who are working directly for building infrastructure contributing to the army or uh, contributing to the agricultural or food sectors are people who were considered to be the the uh, you know more important than someone who is uh, indulging themselves into into uh, making paintings because they do not really serve some uh, tangible purpose in the in the nation building but still why do we find those uh, you know this this activities this endeavors to be uh, significant and that's because something that we have discussed about the idea of art um, which was which was uh, prompted by uh, rabindranath tagore perhaps that idea uh, the art is not something that is always quantifiable but it is the excess right so uh, by by that i mean this this excess is something that is not always quantifiable but that's something that says more about our um, you know our society certain uh, and then um, many different kind of things which are which are which are not uh, always visible on the surface so that is the reason we find that i mean this this particular practices which were, we which emerged in 1947 and and of course that i mean how uh, the the artists uh, the progressive artist group you know they have continued this practice that that speak something about the 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 time there were and uh, this this changing society in the 1940s and at the same time what can be an imagined future for india now if we think about their practice their practices were more or less they were focused on uh, doing paintings on canvas largely so we find that there have been this oil paintings on on canvas now if we think about the use of oil painting as i have already mentioned that it is not something that started with the uh, progressive uh, artist group i mean of course we know that i mean there have been oil paintings um, done by ravi verma in the late 19th century but in 20th century we also find that there was this another prolific painter um, amrita shergill who who showed the way to the next generation painters in the indian subcontinent of how to uh, go about it and in amrita shergill's work we see that this hungarian at the same time indian artist so she was she was trained in in paris and she had seen the metropolitan arts in 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 um, early 20th century europe and then the one of one of her um, early portrait that that we can find it here where we find that she had posed there as as um, and for for the self portrait and if we see the kind of like the uh, the patchy brush strokes and the way the entire surface has been built 
then also the play of colors, the complementary colors, of course, the balance and then the pictorial arrangement, they are highly influenced by the practice which was already established there. For example, uh, the practice which is known as uh, the post-impressionist practice in which the visible brush strokes are left and at the same time we see how the, the bodies or the forms which are seen on the canvas surface are not made as photographic um, object but the materiality of paint of the brush strokes the techniques and everything are left on canvas and it is to show this part of the process and then also the way the form had also had its, its uh, relevance. So, um, to, to understand the underlying form in every um, object and creature around us and then how, how to see the geometricity in, in nature at the same time uh, also like I mean what is the relationship between this internal geometricity and the external outlook. All those experiments we find that uh, those, those were also something that are taken up by Amrita Shergil and Amrita Shergil uh, had done an, several of uh, portraits, uh, sometimes self portraits, sometimes portraits of the other sitters and through that we find that she, she had already mastered the, the technique of uh, European oil painting at the same time the avant-garde um, artistic conventions those were established in the early 20th century Europe. Then she travelled to India and she travelled to a parts of northwestern India and uh, in, in Punjab where she had her family and, and also to the Punjab hills which today we know as Himachal and then of course later on the other parts of India as well. So, when she travelled to India and then she was exposed to uh, some of the uh, paintings for example, the Ajanta murals and, and so on, also like the, the kind of the colour scheme became very different when, when she was in India. So, then we find that there was a visible shift in, in her approach. And, and this is a painting that we find which was painted slightly later in, in 1935 compared to the self portrait that we see in the left side of the screen. So, this portrait, I mean the portrait of these three girls, they were uh, actually Amrita Shergil's cousins in Punjab. So, what we find in this portrait that I mean there are those three sitters and they have their eyes lowered, they are veiled and um, they are seated there of course for, for uh, posing for this painting perhaps, but at the same time their expression uh, is calm and, and um, th th there is nothing uh, extraordinary about um, you know this, this, this portraits. So, by that what we see here is that she had tried to understand this new kind of societal structure in India where her cousins grew up and she could understand that how her life being this bohemian and she, she had access to many different kind of things what her cousins did not have. So, how to express that? through the paintings. So, those, those things became a kind of um, a challenge and, and she had taken up this challenge through her and then she, she uh, sort of merged those, those ideas with her uh, existing practice of oil painting. So, in India we find that Amrita Shergil's brush strokes have become much more sort of smoothened and then there are large patches of um, um, the, the color like for example, there are those fields of uh, for example, if we think about it here that I mean how there is this large area on canvas where there is just this red the attire that her cousin wears, but there are definitely you know modulations slight hint of modulation to, to show that I mean this is this is an attire, but not all the details have been uh, shown here. So, some of the basic forms, the, the solidity of, of the form and their cousins almost like they are immovable. So, those, those ideas that I mean how they are restricted by the rules of the society 
but at the same time also that i mean uh, how how the approach towards life is is different there so those those things we find that to have reflected in the way she had built the forms and and um, uh, so that is and apart from that we also find that there is this masterful um, use of this complementary color how the brightness of the red is complemented by this um, sky blue um, uh, you know this this dupatta that her uh, third cousin wears so th there are definitely these attempts of showing the livelihood condition of of the people there but at the same time also thinking in terms of what constitutes a painting and painting is constituted by fields of color and then how to have a life how to contribute um, you know a life to 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 these painted surfaces so that i mean they are not just documentation they are not just um, 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 a representation of a theme but they are also a document of the process through which they are built so this this kind of activities this kind of new approaches towards uh, artwork that 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 we find with amrita shergil and perhaps these ideas have also reflected later on in the works of the bombay progressives so here we have an image by krishan khanna and and of course that i mean there are many other works by the artists for example raza and suza so for example we find that i mean in suza's work how there are those violent forms there are many of the forms which are considered erotic there are forms which 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 uh, have have uh, generated much controversy uh, but at the same time that we find this this uh, this violent kind of forms the human forms especially women they are represented in suza's work so uh, in 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 some ways we find that i mean that can also be a reflection of the um, the nude studies that those those were prevalent in uh, western europe however those studies were not there in the um, in in the indian subcontinent so to challenge some of the conventions which were established in india uh, perhaps suza had taken up this this measures of of um, you know extensively working on this uh, this violent bodies the nudes and um, so on so this is this is something that we find that that also came up as a strategy that to, a strategy to uh, um, uh, to deliberately deny what was there in the indian subcontinent and as they have already proclaimed that i mean they wanted to move away from the um, the this this uh, romanticism which which were prompted by abindranath tagore and his disciples but then we see that i mean what what they have contributed is is something that uh, allowed the the indian audience to to be to be acquainted with a new form of viewership now here what we see this particular image that is uh, made by krishan khanna and this one is a um, this this particular uh, image is uh, called, this painting is called the news of gandhi ji's death and that that was in 1948 so as we all know that i mean gandhi ji died in 1948 and then so this is perhaps the morning right after this this tragic uh, incident and so we find that there are many people who have perhaps gathered in this public uh, place where there is this one man whom we can find that he is just balancing himself on the uh, on on this bicycle and then uh, still reading this newspaper there is this street light we find that 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 stays at the center of this image uh, almost making this uh, an architectural column like space that we have already seen in in uh, other images and then we also find that uh, uh, th th there are people who are seated there and and in various gestures and postures but for all of them one thing is common that everyone is reading newspapers and the newspaper is the white surface the white and gray surface of the newspaper they dominate the entire picture plane then the this white uh, 
uh, surface, this white and grey surface of the newspaper also comes in contrast to the otherwise gloomy palette of this uh, canvas. And the gloomy palette is understandably for uh, mourning Gandhiji's death, but also at the same time to show this the political situation around this time. Now, if we think about it that this is this is um, this is a particular time when when we find that um, uh, you know many different kind of experiments are happening with painting, but this is a uh, I mean in terms of its form, in terms of the the distribution of color, because here there is this superb distribution of color in terms of how this this white and gray newspapers they sort of. They, they, they are situated in this various parts of this uh, painting and then how these, these uh, newspapers are the elements which bring all those different figures together into this one narrative. So, if this is something that we find that that was uh, uh, you know uh, this this formal exercise has uh, been been played out in these images, and and in most of the discussions around the progressive artist group, uh, this this formal aspect, the the aspect in uh, of of um, you know utilizing form, the color scheme as well as the pictorial arrangement, they get priority. But if we also think about it that I mean this, this painting is made in 1948 and, and um, it, it also refers to this, uh, this, this um, event that had taken uh, place in 1948. So, we see that the progressive uh, artist group, the painters from this group, they were not really um, away from the societal events, even though many of their works they might seem much more abstracted, they might, uh, they, they are often considered as copies or copies of the European avant garde paintings. But we see that I mean they were not everything about this European avant garde painting or the modernist practices, but they wanted to bring different kind of knowledge together and to make it relevant at a time when India gained its independence and then there were new discussion about the role of art in society. So, these are some of the things that, that we find um, uh, how this newly emerging uh, this, this art forms were developing in this newly independent country. So, there are many other aspects we can find that in, in terms of how the canvas painting and, and many other uh, expressions have, have also contributed to that, but we will we'll get into the details of all those other practices in the next lectures. Thank you. Thank you.